there, my name is Mrs. Howell. I am one of the veterinary assistant instructors at Pima Medical Institute. Uh, this is my dog, Bear, and I wanted to review some uh, basic restraints with you today um, on dogs. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we are going to talk about the three major vessels. So we have the cephalic, the jugular vein, and in a dog, the lateral saphenous, okay? Um, so one of the first things I like to tell students is in a dog, your best restraint tool is going to be your leash. This is the only thing uh, helping you if this dog gets away from your grasp, okay? It's the only thing preventing him from going across the clinic um, or outside or disturbing another patient or any of those sorts of things. So make sure you always have a leash on when working with a dog, okay? All right, so ideally when you're working with a dog, you want to try and work with a corner because you don't want them to be able to back up into anywhere else, okay? Um, most dogs will, um, you can utilize verbal commands and they will sit for you, um, but in other cases they won't. What we want to avoid is we don't want to push on their back and force them to sit because we can actually hurt them. So the idea is the scoop method, take your hand behind and make the pet sit, okay? That's the best way to make a pet sit. Uh, the other method is you could uh, walk backwards. A pet is more inclined to sit down than to walk backwards. Okay, uh, so the first one I'll do with you is the jugular. So you wanna face your patient towards your drawer, which in this case would be you guys. Okay, um, I'm in my corner as well as an extra precaution, all right? So patients facing my drawer, there's a couple ways you can do this. The first one is I grow, grab my patient by the snout, okay? Keep that leash on your wrist, all right? Put my hands on the snout, put my elbows to each side of the patient. Um, you can hold the leash part up so that they can have easy access here, okay? So that's one method of restraint. Uh, for the jugular, the other one is one hand around the snout, okay, lift high. I put the other one holding the dog back into me, okay? Remember, we can always hold up uh, our leash or collar or whatever it is we're working with and hold that patient. My shoulder is actually helping hold as well as it's behind the patient's head, okay? All right, so moving on. We're gonna do the cephalic. So remember, that's that vessel on the top part of the leg. Okay, so right here. All right, so main thing, and especially when you're working with your own pet, is we get too comfortable um, not holding their heads as well as we should. And while that may work with your pet when you're in practice, um, there are pets that will take any opportunity they get to um, take off your face, essentially. So make sure you have control of that patient's head first and foremost. Okay, so I'll usually grab the side of the head, push it into my shoulder, okay? I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna go behind that elbow. If you are correctly behind the elbow, the leg will be straight. If you are not behind the elbow, they're still able to bend and pull back that limb. And we're going to go behind the elbow and we are gonna roll. We're gonna roll um, from medial to lateral. So we're gonna roll outward, okay? so. We're gonna roll, and that's gonna make my elbow come down to hold this side of the patient, okay? I've got the head control, I've got the arm out, and I've got the body control. I'm still in a position where if he decides to back up, he's not getting away, okay? Alrighty, and lastly, I wanna show you how to uh, do a lateral saphenous. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. This can be done standing, and this can be done laying down, okay? So the first one I'll do is standing since he's so eager to get up. Um, for those of you who know about Northern breeds, they tend to be a little bit dramatic and pretty whiny. So that's how he gets too, especially when you flip him. Okay, so we'll have him stand up, turn towards you. I'm gonna put my knee under him. Okay, so my knee is under him. My top part of my hand is gonna be grabbing his head, controlling his head. My other hand is gonna come back and squeeze the knee, is what I tell people, squeeze the knee, okay? What that's going to do is it's gonna make that vessel down here, oh, there's another dog, that vessel down here pop, okay? So that they can draw uh, blood or give an injection or do whatever it is they need to do, okay? 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and put him into a lateral position, okay? Remember, whichever lateral recumbency it is, it's going to be whichever side of the patient is touching the ground, okay? So if I turn him on his side now, which I will, uh, he's gonna be considered in left lateral recumbency, okay? So to put a patient safely on their side, you wanna take your, first, your front hand, grab the inner leg, your back hand, and grab the inner leg, okay? Those of you who are vertically challenged, this may be a little bit harder. Now I'm gonna roll this patient down my body and safely plant him on the ground. Okay, that prevents there being a body slam type motion. Go, go Kai, go. All right, so this is me just doing a lateral restraint. I've got Baron, go. Baron, go. <laughs> Lots of huskies. Go get it. All right, so I've got my elbow holding the body. Go. And I've got my other elbow holding the head. Go in. All right. <sighs> so in order to do the uh, vessel restriction or hold off for the V, go, get down, go, 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 kennels, go, kennels. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take my hand and I'm going to squeeze the knee. I'm still using this elbow to hold down the patient, but I am squeezing the knee. All right. And that's how you hold off for a lateral saphenous in a dog, okay? All righty. Uh, I'll also be making some cat videos soon if you want to tune in for those.